Here's a DSP quickie. I'm going to talk about linear interpolation really quick because I touched on it last video but didn't really go into it much. The, the general idea is that the issue that we had is that if you're reading samples out of a table, out of an array of numbers basically, um, and you just stair step them, uh, you create a lot of noise uh, and a lot of roughness, which can be okay for percussions like snare drums or ocean waves, but it's, it's really bad if you have, say, a flute, or most sounds, to be honest. It's a, it's a lot of distortion. It's generally considered unacceptable. Uh, so one easy fix, and this is the simplest thing you can do, um, is you draw a line through it. So, you know, if your position is, uh, let's say your position is here, instead of hearing this last sample here, now you're going to hear somewhere in between the two. And one perk of that, too, is that you're not if at a high rate, you're less likely to skip an entire sample also. So it's retaining, uh, basically filling in the gaps here. You're, it's pretending that you have a higher sampling rate than you really have. It's imperfect in that it's making it's going to make these kind of jaggy lines, uh, which has another issue, but uh, it's better than stair-stepping uh, by far. Um, so how do we really accomplish this? Well, uh, you have these two heights. And, you know, let's call them Y1 and Y2 for now, just to keep it simple. You have some amount that you're kind of in between them. Let's call that D for distance, to make it easy. Um, and what you want is, you as, as you get closer, you're adding on the difference between from Y1 and Y2, the, the height difference, so, right? because this is your, going to be your baseline, you're going to subtract this and, you know, add that. So as you get more and more, as D gets more and more towards 1 from 0, uh, this gets closer and closer to Y2. And as, as it doesn't really become 1, it, you know, gets as close as possible and then it wraps around. So now this is going to be your Y1 and then there's going to be a, a Y2 somewhere out here. Um, and the general equation uh, is, is pretty simple. It's uh, Y1 plus the distance from 0 to 1 times that difference. One multiply, a couple adds uh, per sample, and that's pretty lightweight. And you know, these, if you do a bunch of samples, they don't really depend on each other, uh, unlike a lot of, you know, more complicated, um, you know, filters or something. So you can do a lot of these in parallel. Uh, it's really fast. Uh, now, let's put it in, in, just for kicks, put it in kind of C++ notation. You know, we've got some let's say we call it a sine wave we'll call it sine with an e that's to not be confused with sin the math function you know so we have i don't know some some, some number of samples and we're going to read out of this um we're going to have a for you know let's say our position p is 4.3 whatever that is right that's not four times it's four point um so let's say it's that, and so what we need is we need an index, uh, let's say an integer version of of p, which is you know going to be the floor, right in floating point terms uh, for p. That's going to be a p, <laughs> um, and that's going to be that's going to be equal to four in this example. Um, and now we also need the um, kind of the, the decimal part of this, the distance between the two points. And so this is going to be, uh, your distance is going to be P minus I. So the four minus, uh, wait, 4.3 minus four yielding 0.3, right? And that's correct. Um, so now for every sample, we're going to do this. This is, I was going to say, you know, there's going to be a loop in here, whatever. Uh, you know, do it however you want. <laughs> um, but uh, what we're going to have is we're going to have the sign. So wait, um, I'm going to say like output is going to be a Y. Uh, uh, this is kind of confusing because I was using Y to be the height. But uh, let's just call the output Y. Uh, so Y equals... Um, let's see, it's going to be sine, so our table, 
of i, right? That's our integer. I'm sorry, I'm, peek, I'm losing my hand to peek at the what I call the variables. Um, plus sine of i plus 1, the next sample, minus this one, right? Because it's this minus that. Hopefully it's not too confusing with more than one uh, you know, repurposing y here from the original mathy example. Um, so we have the difference in the two samples, and then we're going to multiply it by that distance, that fractional amount. Okay, so this will give us the right number. Now, you ask yourself though, what happens? When we're at sample number 31, there is no 32. 32 is the number of samples that goes from 0 through 31. 32 doesn't exist. So if we're at 31, we're going to need a 30-second sample. And we can either loop back when we get our i plus 1 if we're at 31. We can either loop back and get 0 with an if statement, or a or we could, you know, if it's a power of 2 like this, uh, you can toss in an and, but then you have to apply that for every you know, every um, sample you pull, uh, the easier thing to do is to bump this up. And then you have 32 samples of sine, uh, and then the 33rd sample is gonna be identical to the first one. And that's why in my previous tutorial, I had the sine tables plus one. And I, I, I often like to write that, you know, in code to make my intentions clear 32 plus 1, and the compiler will come along and figure that out. Um, so there you go, that's linear interpolation. It's not the best kind of, the best um, is stuff like cubic, and that uses, you know, f more than two samples, it uses four as uh, a cubic curve fit. And you do that by, you take a polynomial and you draw it through these points. Um, I believe, I can just go touch on this real quick of these principles. This is basically if we're going to use this y notation from the first part here. Uh, I think I think you'd consider it y of the last sample, 0, 1, and then two, so 2 ahead, 1 behind current sample. Um, and I can, if anyone's interested, I could put together a tutorial on that. Um, I think the two major kinds are Hermite and Lagrange, and they I think they both have different properties. Um, but uh, that's pretty interesting uh, in itself. And if you are familiar with solving linear equations from algebra, like systems of equations, sorry, I guess not linear, um, systems of equations, uh, you'll be able to figure that out too uh, with a bit of a big a bit of legwork, brain work, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so that pretty much sums up linear interpolation. There's no audio example. I just did this real kind of off the cuff here, and I uh, you know hope you were able to get something out of it. Thanks.